Three words. Great fucking crack. Organic as fuck. Good fucking crack. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Chaz Maloney. I'm a DJ, producer, and promoter from Limerick City. Um, I've been running nights, but I've been doing all of the above for the last seven or eight years. I became involved in the Limerick music scene, uh, I suppose, by going to nights. When I was in first year of college, I used to go to Die and used to go to Subtech. I used to go and really, really enjoy myself at them and enjoy the kind of people you meet at those nights. And so that's when we kind of bit the bullet and started our own collective. A uh, touch of techno and it kind of just spiraled from there really, you know? It, it goes back to when I was in college really. I started m make tunes and then people started kind of finding out about them up in Limerick and then I just started DJ at house parties. That went on to, I met Chaz, the guy I run touch techno with. Um, met him at a house party. Most romantic story ever. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I met him at a house party and then that was really when we got involved because that's when we started doing gigs in town. And then that kind of just opened up a whole new book of the Limerick scene to me, you know, and it's still only growing. <laughs> I think there's there's uh, there's a bit more of like a rowdy atmosphere at the nights here. People aren't afraid to take their tops off and wave wave above their heads and all that stuff in Limerick, you know. I think people are just more loose in Limerick. I believe. The word I'm looking for is, uh, they're not afraid to just go for it on the dance floor. I think what makes it special is the fact that like, we're so small and like we really don't have that much to go on. We have two, three venues tops and everyone wants to play it. How I got into DJing, I think it was um, similar to a lot of people. You, you go to one nightclub or one specific night or you see one specific DJ and you think, that's what I want to do. For me, it was um, it was the first time I went to die in Dolan's and I was in that warehouse and I was thinking, yeah, I'm going to be up there one day without a doubt, this is what I want to do. How has it evolved over the years? I suppose the big thing is we're losing spaces. And it's a discussion that comes up a lot lately. Limerick has like two spaces now, whereas years and years ago there was there was lots of opportunities to do different stuff, whereas now you're really, really limited. But that's because of a lot of factors, like the pandemic has had a, an awful effect on venues. A lot of venues have had to shut down because they've had no income for the last number of years, you know. The club scene in Ireland definitely does not get enough support from the government. There's not enough support there financially. There's not enough venues for us. Like, if you look at the figures over the last 10, 20 years of how many venues we've lost and how many we have left, it's staggering. You will not see that in virtually any other country. Dublin City Council let these developers knock down pretty much all of our cultural institutions. Like, they let them knock down Hangar and they let them knock down District 8. Bernard Shaw was knocked down. Um, so, like, there really isn't um, a care for this culture at all within the government, you know. So I, I've got two fantastic guests, right? And they're from an organization called Give Us The Night. And they've been campaigning. Give Us The Night is, is ran by Sunil and Robbie Kitt. They campaign, they make the public aware of what's going on and like what changes need to be made to make Ireland a, a, a better place for club lovers. So like, in, but in this country, you've always needed court permission. Like people were annoyed when the COVID re like regulations came in, it's banned dancing indoors. It's yeah. always been the case that you have to get court permission to have a dance in Ireland in any context. Licensing laws in Ireland need to change. The likes of England, Spain, all places like that where you can run a pub 24 hours a day if you want to. It's not the fact that we want to run the pub 24 hours a day, but it's like where everyone comes out in the street at one time from all different establishments, that's when stuff kicks off. 
if you look at bar staff that are working or people who are working in the bar industry, they can't go out because everywhere is closed at the same time, you know. I think people, what people think is everyone would be out partying all night, but that's not how it would work. It would be like certain people would go into a club for a few hours, then they'd leave, and more people would come in for a few hours and then they'd leave again. But what it would do is it would allow everyone to go out. As it stands, everyone spills out into the streets at the same time. There's way more negative behaviour, antisocial behaviour, um, all that sort of stuff. Like, it put, like all that sort of stuff puts a strain on hospital services, um, police force, everything. And even like with electronic music becoming as popular as it has, like techno tourism is a very real thing. Like how many people travel to Holland to go to gigs? How many people travel to Germany to go to gigs? If we had the support there and we had the structure in place, there is no reason that people would not come to Ireland for the same thing. Do you think illegal raves are a product of lack of dance spaces? Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, illegal raves are definitely a byproduct of having no spaces. And having spaces that are restricted entirely by these crazy outdated laws, you know. And the reason we do them is because we can go and we can put it on the space for free. We don't have to send a judge down to the courthouse to get a license that only allows us to operate till 2am, you know? So like some of the best nights I've been to have been illegal raves because there's no boundaries, there's no restrictions on what you can do. Raves are where many people in this industry have started or they found their, their happy place at them. You can find yourself at these raves and find your best mates at these raves too. Even you know, sometimes maybe you never find that name again. But <laughs> no, no. You have to pay, you, you literally have to pay police to go around busting all your mates that are like smoking a joint. So it's like it's not worth it. The amount of different licenses, insurances and stuff that there's no way to ever be able to afford it without charging every single one of your mates like fucking over a hundred quid a ticket. Not, there's none of this for profit, it's literally just to cover the expenses and to, to all of us have a good time and yeah, that's it. What's your favourite part about these events? Uh, at six in the morning when everyone says fucking yeah. It's such an important thing. Music helps you socialize. It lets you escape escape from you know reality in a way it's helped society through difficult times it's wonderful the rave scene is always going to be illegal and it's always going to be surrounded by drugs whereas when you're in a venue it's safe you're looked after most times and the government don't give a shit about it, really. It's like they preferred if we were closed, to be honest. They've been trying to cull the drinking habits in Ireland for the last 20 years. They tried it in the 80s, it didn't work. They tried it in the 90s, it didn't work. I thought with the pandemic it was going to work, but now that we're back open again, it didn't work. There definitely is a resiliency in Irish in Irish people, like, um, you know, over the two years of COVID, like, you know, it was really, really hard. 
and then once we were coming out the other end everyone was like it felt like everyone in the country was together and a resilient is exactly the best word to describe that because it just we didn't we didn't let it affect us as, as much as it possibly could like you know why is music important to you music is important to me because i feel like it gives people a release from life pretty much um and that's why i do what i do because i feel like people who are working office jobs and stuck doing mundane stressful things they can go to a nightclub and they can listen to dance music and forget about everything for a few hours and if i can facilitate that in any way i will music is so important to me it's my life like everything that i do involves music listening to a piece of music um, and, and the feeling that you actually get from it is something that you can't really explain sometimes, you know. Yeah, I don't know where I'd be without it, to be honest with you. It's, it's my, my go-to place if I ever I'm feeling down or, or, you know, or anything like that. It's, that's where I, where I go and um, I love it. <laughs> it gives me purpose. Um, I don't think, I don't know what I'd do with myself if it wasn't for music. Like, this is, this is what I wake up and do. From start to, from day start to day's end, it's what I'm passionate about, and it's what I love doing, and will always continue to do. Just those moments in general where just the crowd is right, and whether you're in it or whether you're playing towards it, and there's there's a certain energy in the room. It's tangible. You can almost reach out, reach out, and you can grab it. You look around, and you just see strangers smiling at each other and hugging each other, and like that's what it's all about. But those are the moments you strive to create. That's why we run nights, that's why we play these sets, that's why we bring people together to dance and to rejoice and to have fun. I would like Irish nightlife to be on a similar level to our European counterparts. Um, I feel like the means is there for it, to, for it to happen. I feel like the right people are in the country at the moment to make it happen. Eventually it will be a slow process, but I would like Ireland to be viewed as the same clubbing landscape as your European counterparts, yeah. I have really big hopes because, because the DJs and producers in Ireland right now are unbelievable. Um, so I just feel like there's still just like one more step for Irish DJs and, and um, producers to go and uh, will be like, you know, one of the best in, in around the scene. Is a talent coming out of Ireland right now is incredible, so I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful. Yeah, really.